Hi friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk about AI, data, stats, research, and random stuff. One of the challenges with working with the large language models, like ChatGPT, is the way that they structure and organize output. You have your chat window, you type things in, you get stuff that kind of heads down the page. If you like, you can start a new chat, and then you've just got a new little link for that one. And that's pretty much it. It's kind of disorganized, and it can be hard to keep coherency. One of the ways in programming that we have tried to address this is the use of what's called notebooks. So a notebook is a way that you would be able to put together your code, maybe notes, maybe other information, all together within one area. Google is trying to do something similar here with Notebook LM. Notebook LM, they've tagged as a virtual research assistant. Basically what it is, is an interface for you to be able to work with your large language model, to be able to upload PDFs and chat with them, and really just to be able to keep all of a project more neatly together. Claude is moving towards that model, but I found their projects to be a wee bit clunky, and particularly in comparison to what we have here. So a big thanks to Bron Eger, she was the one that put me on to Notebook LM, Definitely recommend following her webpage and LinkedIn to be able to see some other really great AI information and content, particularly around the use of AI in universities and higher education. She has this really wonderful guide here, starting out with what is Notebook LM, and then a really nice guide of getting started, uploading PDFs, doing the analysis, and I will link this web page up for you to be able to have a scroll through and a read of your own. But if you like digesting your information in a written form rather than just through video, I think this is going to be a really nice way for you to have a read through and see how to use these notebooks. So from their main page, notebooklm.google, we just need to hit try, sign in with our Google account, and we end up on a page that looks like this. Currently, as it says up here in the left, it is experimental, so won't necessarily be super polished. On the flip side, currently it's all free. So I think it could be a little bit like some of the other Google products where eventually there's a free tier and a paid tier. But for the time being, this is what we've got. If we start by taking a look at the sample documents, we've got some nice sample ones. So if we take a look at one of these examples, we'll look at this Westwood with mushrooms. We can see down the left-hand side, We've got our sources, and currently they're all ticked. So all of those sources will then go into all of your chatting that you do. We can see that we've got written notes, so we've set some notes for ourselves. And then we've got some saved responses. So we've chatted with the large language model using these sources, it's given us answers, and then we've been able to save these as notes. So as you can see, not super fancy, but just very, very handy. If I've got a series of documents, I wanna be able to put them together, I wanna to be able to write my own notes, but then also queries and save those queries, all together, all saved, there they are. For me to do my own, just come back and you can see that actually this will be my first one. We hit create, we can upload our sources, we can also link them, paste in text or link to Google Drive. Currently down here we've got a source limit of 50, which is pretty good. That's a pretty substantial amount of resources for most things that you might want to do. This notebook, I've uploaded an article, it's about AI. And so when we come down here, we've got our chat. We can see that it is linking up to these 27 sources. If we click on notebook guide, it gives us a bit of info here. So these are all links where we can generate things. And once it's created, a Summary, it'll come up with some suggested questions as well. But maybe if we start off, let's just see what the table of contents is going to give us. Okay, so we've generated a couple of things here. We've got a table of contents. Curiously, it only mentions some, not all 27 of the articles. We've then got the briefing document. And so the briefing document gives us themes and insights. Kind of a little bit hard to read here in the, the funny little box. Hopefully they work a little bit on the presentation. We do have it in dark mode got the little moon there we can change into white screen black text if we would prefer and so we can see we've got important considerations we've got next steps so that's pretty good these notes come up from me using these 
and yeah the ui just needs a wee bit of work but i'm still impressed with what it's doing and just the fact that it can synthesize and summarize documents and i really like this so first chat that i asked was just to provide the main themes of the provided articles and the really nice thing here is that it gives all of the references so i'm interested just in what's in here and we can see that it splits them up i've at the very minimum read the abstract and kind of skim read most of these read some of the more in depth and it's done a really good job of coming up with these different areas so that's really good and then from here we can see down the bottom we've got the questions so we can then click on one of these so it can help guide us with any kind of analysis of these articles as well so let's go for this one about the ethics so again everything well referenced back to the articles gets a little bit annoying so it, it numbers them and it's nice that it numbers them when i click on that it actually goes back to my source guide and highlights where it's taken it from so that I really like. I guess user interface wise, it would be nice that the hover over, that the numbers corresponded. I assume the numbering corresponds to the order that we have here, but it's not blatantly obvious. So just around the edges, a little bit, a few rough edges on this user interface, but again, really good, good bullet pointing. Next up, based on the articles, I asked it to design a research study to investigate AI use amongst GP trainees. It's actually something that I have done over the past year and it all actually looks pretty good. So a mixed method study, that's what I've been doing. So we're going to have survey, we've got study population, we've got the sampling strategy. If we're doing a survey, I don't love purposive sampling, but if we doing interviews that would be reasonable so there's a few pretty generic things i'd imagine any time you asked it about designing a study it's going to have things about ethical considerations you can see the dissemination of findings is all pretty generic kind of stuff but still pretty good kind of reminiscent of i've asked similar questions of chat gpt and it similarly did somewhat generic but actually pretty reasonable setup of a study design and we could keep prompting if we really wanted to get into specifics so next up i was curious about the scope of being able to go beyond the sources and search out into the the internet and it seems very much that the system is not keen or not designed for that however it did give me good suggestions i wanted to know about other articles beyond the ones that i'd captured and so because it is all designed around starting with my source it says well the sources aren't telling it much and maybe that's not even true i suspect the reference lists from some of them might include that but it does give good suggestions of keywords gives some good suggestions on some some possible journals to be looking at a little bit of other information one thing i hadn't mentioned as we've been going each of these little uh, boxes that that produces have a little pin in the corner when we pin this that brings it as a saved response so sitting here on this main notebook page we can save the key bits that we want. And that's quite handy if we compare to something like ChatGPT where you might have had multiple prompts and need to do a bit of scrolling. Here you can just keep and collate the key bits. My last prompt was to write the framework for a literature review based on these articles. And again, it's done a pretty good job. It's given us possible headings. It's mentioned the different articles that is going to be included. Definitely, it really wants to go into bullet points. So we'll give it one more test see if it can actually write a literature review asking it to write a literature review certainly kicked off okay we can see that it's using most of the sources certainly those first 15 didn't use all 27 but it did also start to head back into bullet point territory so i think it has have a real desire even when we're kind of asking for something that normally wouldn't be bullet pointed that it wants to do that and i think that is probably actually a good thing for the most part if you are a researcher ideally you're not just using chat gpt to be writing your articles but having a tool like this that can do some of the summarization can crunch through a whole lot of articles pull out some key things and let you discuss it as well so each time we've produced something the suggested questions that we've been getting down here have actually been really good and some of them might have been things you didn't think of they can be good avenues to pursue and just let you do it in a much quicker fashion if i want to add my own notes we've got the add note button here so add that and then i can type in some notes 
as well. And then up the top right, we've got this share button where we can share it with others. So this has been Notebook LM from Google. I think it's a really handy tool if you're needing to be able to compile, look for themes out of documents, things like that. It's not an exact substitute for something like ChatGPT, but I think the thing that it does do does a little bit more cleanly, a little bit more easily, just in terms of being able to put all the different bits and pieces together and work only off the sources. I've found with the large language models like ChatGPT, I can upload some documents and even when I say use these documents, it'll mostly do that, but sometimes it'll stray off into other territory, whereas this seems very much locked into working with the sources you've given it. As always, you should be making sure you are careful with your data governance, thinking carefully about what is appropriate to be uploading to Google server. You would hope that Google is probably a little bit better than some of the startups in terms of the safety and security of their infrastructure, but always very important to be looking at exactly what that is and whether it's appropriate for the kinds of things you're putting here. I can definitely see myself coming back to this tool. It's really nice at the moment being experimental that it is free. So that always is a bonus to be getting something that doesn't have the ability to use it throttled back, even if there is maybe a few kind of rough edges. Haven't really come across bugs as such yet. And if you can see this use case for yourself, I definitely encourage you to jump on and have a go yourself. That's it for today. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll be back really soon with more videos on AI research stats and random stuff.